Clemson, Georgia, Mercedes Benz. Georgia, 13 and a half point favorites. Also favored by ESPN, 82.3%. I think what catches my attention the most here, bro, that spread, that, oh, excuse me, the over under of 48 and a half. What do you make of that? Man, that, to me, that, and I, I wish I'd had the, the foresight to look at this for Florida State and Georgia Tech. That's the new rules, man. I mean, again, I, this is like the third episode. I think I've talked about it within a week's time. But Florida State got like two possessions in the second half, man. Teams are going to be able to do that if they play their cards right. If they, yeah. you know, wear down the play clock and they're picking up first downs, they are going to be able to really end the game. And I, I think you're going to see some really low over-unders, and I think you're going to see a lot of unders while we see how, you know, you know how game management can be in college – while we see how they pick up managing the games, even with in helmet communication, all that, it, it's often the coaches as much as it is the players who mess up the game management, the down and distances to go for, do I kick it, do I go, yada, yada, all the analytical things. We see the coaches mess it up, obviously, as much as the players, if not more. Um, and I think you're going to see a lot of low, a lot of low uh, over unders this season as a result of it until, you know, we see. Again, how adapts adaption adaptations are made to these rules. Finally, I hear you, dude. I hear you. I got another question for you. Okay, all right. So, <clears throat> I think we know what to anticipate out of Georgia. Yes, schematically, style, pace, tendencies, all the things. You and I spoke about. I believe it was the Auburn Georgia game, going into that one last year. Auburn's going to play with house money. We're going to let it rip. Let it play. At what point do we start seeing Dabo playing a little looser? And it and and if it does come to it where he decides to do these things, why is it not this game? Dude, why is it not this one? You know, again, just using the FPI, the the betting spreads that we talked about. As confused as I was about our prior two FPIs, I'm that confused about why Dabo doesn't open. Let it rip, my guy. Let it rip. That's how you lure the big – Let's just receivers. That's how you lure those big receivers that you made your cash on in the last decade. That's how you get those guys back, man. You let it rip. You, you, you create space and plays for those guys. You are, you've tried to be aggressive with your offensive coordinator hire. It should work. To me, I mean, it worked at TCU. I don't see why it can't work at Clemson with a bright offensive mind, with a with a rally. <laughs> for all freaking, I mean, the rallies, they're brilliant. They're brilliant football minds. Why not trust the guy and let it rip? Now, maybe we find out, you know, let's say another graduating class from now, maybe four years goes by, and we're, we look back and we say, it was Ke- it was Ked Klubnik. Maybe that was the reason. I don't I don't think so. I really think he could be a gunslinger and and move the ball down the field and be an accurate passer, um, be all those things. Man, he's tough. He's greedy. He's a gamer, I think. But we don't see it on the field yet, so it's got to be Dabo to me, and it's just got to be stubbornness, and I don't know what else because, I mean, they weren't closed-minded when they had Deshaun Watson, when they had Trevor Lawrence and those guys out there doing the thing, man. They weren't closed-minded, and we're going to beat you in a cloud of dust, three yards of cloud of dust in the phone booth, and you know, they were fun, man. They were moving the ball around. They had really great quarterbacks, obviously, and great mm-hmm. receivers for them to throw to. Mm-hmm. But when, when, like, do you think you're going to get those guys back to Clemson, South Carolina, doing this crap? Oh, I know. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. And I, I think if he would just be a little more open-minded about the portal, he'd be surprised if the oh, interest man. he would gain. But yeah. that's not the conversation, so I don't I don't, want, I don't want to dangle there too long. Let me ask you yeah. this. Who needs this one more? Because in my mind, who needs it more is Clemson, and Dabo Sweeney needs it more. If Georgia loses this game, I don't think your your fan base is out on you. I think if, 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 if Clemson loses this game, I don't think that your fan base is out on you, but it's starting to become like sand in your hands. Yes. And it's not the matter. It's not. It's not because you've 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 lost games. It's the manner in which you've lost games, and the way you handle off season, the way you're managing your roster, and just refusing to adapt and being stubborn. And you know he's got his way of doing things. 
And if that's your argument, and if that's the spine you're going to have, I applaud you for having a spine. But at some point, that has to win you some of these games. I get it. It's Georgia. It's it's Georgia, who is yeah. title winners two out of the last three years, right? Well, and if they're in it in 23, probably in the title game, you have to like their chances, okay? Yep. You could be talking three out of three. I know. So I, I know that it's Georgia. But if you come out here and you you allow Georgia to cover this, if I'm if I'm a Clemson faithful, if you're Tyler and Spartanburg, <laughs> if I'm Tyler and Spartanburg, seriously, I mean I hate to say it, but at some point you it's it's got to come down to dude, change your philosophy, or go. Yeah, I mean, isn't it kind of like like it? Okay, if it's not there yet, let's say Michigan beats Ohio State this year. <laughs> Is it? I mean, and and the reception for Ryan Day if you lose what four in a row is that correct? If they lose this one, I think uh, mm, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Yes. Mm, well, they twenty one, twenty twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four is what yes, that would be, right? Yes, math so, is hard. Again, yeah. you know, d- let, let's just carry that situation to Clemson in big games, okay? Because you're probably going to roll the ball out and win a lot of boring games. If if it, you know, if things are bad this year, you're probably still going to out talent a lot of a lot of teams. And you're going to win eight, nine games probably by minimum effort. But the big games, man, the ones that matter like this, I'm with you. I think Clemson Clemson needs it more because I already don't like their response from any loss to this game unless it's like we just got, you know, the most unlucky break. Georgia kicks a 60-yard field goal to win it at the buzzer. Mm -hmm. Any other scenario, I don't like Clemson's bounce back to a loss here, whereas I know – Dude, mm-hmm. I already know what Kirby's saying and how bad the the ear holes are bleeding of those players mm-hmm. if they lose this game under any circumstances because mm-hmm. they've got the talent, they've got the speed, they've got the coaching at this point, I think. So I don't like Clemson's bounce back if it, if it doesn't go their way, especially especially if Georgia covers like you mentioned a minute ago. But that for me, that's the reason. And, you know, frankly, the knowing the way that Kirby will have his teams bounce back, They've got plenty of other chances down this schedule to prove why they're a playoff caliber team, why they're, you know, they can go win 10, 11 games. Clemson, and, and they could still win, obviously, 10 plus games if they lose this one because of the opponent that it is. But the, the, look, Georgia plays Alabama, Georgia plays Texas, Georgia plays Ole Miss. Clemson doesn't have that. They've got what? Florida State, Miami, as, as we know of in the realm of theoretical playoff contenders at the beginning of this year. Is that right? App State, NC State, Stanford, Florida State, Wake Forest, Virginia, Louisville, Virginia Tech, Pitt, Citadel, South Carolina. I've forgotten their schedule altogether. Never mind. I disregard. <laughs> they don't have the they don't have the yeah. the opponents on their schedule to really build much of a playoff case unless they just surprise me and win out after again in a potentially ugly loss if it goes that route on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think this is I think this is still a heavyweight fight. I don't think Clemson has left that arena yet or that stratosphere. However, the their their lack of their lack of in the receiver room, I think is going to get them beat. And I don't really think you really need to entertain any part of the conversation. I think their defense is going to be solid. I think the ground game is going to be good enough. Quarterback play, we shall see but they just don't have the receivers. I think Georgia can make them one dimensional mm-hmm. and I look for Georgia to cover. Yeah, I mean, I've been I think I've been telling anybody and everybody that I would probably take Georgia up to 20 points in this one. That's just the way that I think these teams are trending. That's the talent gap at the most important positions, especially offensively, obviously in quarterback, second in receiver weapons because well, frankly, I know how Clemson's been recruiting it, and I've seen how Georgia's been doing it on the field, and mm-hmm. I envision them to continue. So I'm with you. I've certainly got them covering 13 and a half. Uh, nothing would surprise me what, because I've seen what Georgia can do to a good team. I think the only win for Clemson is that Matt Luke is their offensive line coach, but that's such a minor win. <laughs> that is such a <laughs> minor win. You know, very few offensive line coaches carry a name like Matt Luke, Sam Pittman, yada, yada. That's such a small win if you don't have the dudes to block it, if you don't have the dudes to exploit it and and take advantage of any openings, and I don't think they do. Yeah, that's basically saying that Matt Luke has prepared the <clears throat> offensive line to win this game 
that they can march up and down the field, and I don't see that happening. You heard it here first. We're both taking Georgia, but don't be surprised if Clemson covers.